Absolutely. Now, moving on, let's play a game that we haven't played in a long time. Let's play... Is it... Let's play the name no. game. The name game? Let's play the name game. Which team is winning the name game in today's match? Well, I'm going to have to see everybody in the spectators. Uh, understand that the name game is a tried and true tradition here at the Air Culver Twitch cast. Uh, oftentimes, it was not put on live stream before uh, because we used to be members of the University of Hartford team. And we'd always assign which team was winning the name game, which one has a better name list, which one has a more effective stylization. Now, here are a couple ground rules. Numbers cringe in the middle of them, but if they're at the end, they can uh, provide a little bit of sustenance. A little bit of that extra little oomph when it comes to your name and your gamer tag. Uh, and keeping all of that in mind, I'd also like to add a new rule that I've been thinking about recently. And that's going to be matching and or counter matching uh, profile pictures in Overwatch 2. That's one of the big things that I'm seeing out of Hard Rockers here. Look at the unification. Every single blue member here rocking the, uh, is that Bride? The Bride skin um, from the recent uh, Halloween event. That's a really, really so solid plus in my mind. However, I do have a small issue with all of the numbers, especially the misspellings. Dragon or Dr. Gan? It's a big question in my mind. Mr. Oog or Mr. Zero OG? Cyberry or PSX Berry? Arca 3Ds? Arca, no thanks. I, when I'm looking at these, I'm going to have to give it a solid 5149 going to University of Hartford. Now, granted... I'm hearing you guys in the comments right now. Blah, blah, blah. Peter this. Peter that. You like University of Hartford. Listen. The addition of Revan in 1982 was a big issue for me. Just off the name alone. I had a small issue with it. Trueblade 16? Numbers hold up, at the end? Hold up. Hold up. Okay, are, you not, are you not going to respect the synergy between Revan and Super Vader? How so do you mean? <laughs> Star Wars? Have you not have you not heard of uh, Darth Revan? Uh, I'm sorry, no, it's not a story that the Jedi would tell me. That's painfully cringe. But you know, those Jedi. You know what? Suck. I dutifully I dutifully apologize. However, you have to remember, University of Hartford is taking away the dub in the name game today. I appreciate the floor that I have been given to explain a little bit about the name game and to assign a winner for the first time in quite a long time. It's a slight, it's only a slight L taken by Hard Rockers, which I do like the university name, Hard Rockers, very solid name. I also enjoy the names doubled as well as Dr. Gan, if that's exactly how it's supposed to be said, but just due to a little bit of confusion on my part, as well as the numbers, especially in Archimedes, you know, just, just sours me a little bit, and with the additional information that these are Star Wars references, you know what, I, I think I can give a more solid pass for Revan that might just bring those numbers a little equaler, but... This is going to be King's Row with University of Hartford down one. Great pick right off the start by Orimaru. Now, I think we're going to see him. Yep, he swaps over to the Sojourn. I'm really hoping that uh, True Blade is going to make this Zarya pick work. Zarya, as we know, is really pro uh, prominent in the meta today. So, seeing just like that, he's already at 100 charge. But, Absolutely. oh, he's getting brought really low taking so much damage straight to the dome right now. His However, this Arya and the other team is also going there we go. more of slow field is kind of goaded. That was fantastic by the University of Hartford. My biggest concern, though, I will say, is that uh, True Blade spent a lot of that time standing out in the middle of the open. Uh, typically, you would like to see uh, your players in general and your Zarya trying to hug natural cover a little more so they can have protection on their own, you know, and not be quite so reliant on the uh, supports to keep you alive through it all. Yeah, that definitely put them in a perilous position, but it also put the enemy team, the Hard Rockers, in a bad position as well, uh, kind of having to keep that open space to deny the continual pressure that they were applying to point there. Might have been the reason as to why they actually lost the point. But as we look into this book fight here on second point push on King's Row, uh, it's definitely going to be a slight advantage to uh, University of Hartford as they have their ultimates coming online. That Graviton could be huge as they already picked two. The coal being used by Hard Rockers here, but it's not going to be finding much purchase as they're already down three. The coat does find one, but at this point the fight's pretty much over. Just trying to stall for a little bit of extra time. And Hartford has a substantial ultimate advantage coming into this next fight. 
Uh, I'm expecting maybe a grab blade, and I'm also hoping in the following fight they can combo uh, overclock with the amplification window. Yeah, hopefully they don't overuse here and crash their economy as quickly as they built it. But that's going to be a grab starting off, and it looks like the blade going in, or at least Genji just swiping. Oh, and a window going to be used to just kind of finish things off here. And honestly, that's not a bad use of ultimates. Like you called it, two ultimates used. Um, obviously going to continue to be built up by Hard Rockers. That was a very good ultimate uh, economical fight by the University of Hartford. Yeah, that was really well done. And now we are looking at the overclock, and we're looking at the blade coming up by the University of Hartford in this next fight. Yeah, and they do have the beat to save, um, which might be important, especially as that grab gets very close to being online by Hard Rockers. Uh, the other options are definitely to try and deal with maybe the Tor Bolt, which could be very dangerous as well, but you have the overclock, and they're going to have to use first here. University of Hartford kind of biding their time quite a bit, allowing the underneath team to build up some of these support ultimates. Absolutely. Still holding on to these much more powerfully tipping ultimates. Still really? holding. I really want to see them hitting this button. They're waiting a long time, and you'll, you see... Uh, the two damage players for the University of Hartford, obviously, they're not gaining any ult charge by waiting this long. Meanwhile, Hard Rockers, they've been just playing catch up and they built all of their ultimates during that time. Yep. Grav came and out, they Molten Core came out, uh, and uh, the Symmetra Wall all came out, and the University of Hartford just waited. Now, they're once again in an ultimate advantage because of uh, the Hard Rockers over investing, but. I really would have liked them to hit that button much earlier. If they press that button right when they, uh, right when the fight starts to break out, and then they just steamroll them, uh, because the Hard Rockers had almost no ultimates online. If you can build that momentum up, then you can just really go. They yeah, might... and that momentum once again is just stalling here, using the blade after a loss already, and that's going to be the beat coming out they, that they allowed them to build, honestly. Yeah. Now. Oh, big grab. By Hartford. The blade baited out the sound barrier, which allowed no, uh, no beat for the uh, Graviton Surge by True Blade. Yeah, but they don't get as much value. They only kill one here, and they're still holding the position firmly. Hard Rockers, however, losing their Symmetra very quickly, as well as Dr. Gan and Mrog going down in the back line. Uh, and that's going to be a clean cleanup. Uh, Double just jumping off the map, not electing to uh, stall out point any longer. Um, but going into this last fight, there is, this, uh, once again, an ult advantage. Holding on to this beat, we have this window. University of Hartford looking in a solid position to just close it out with three minutes remaining on the clock here. Uh, and they're all going to approach from right side as Hard Rockers push to elect to just go straight to point as fast as possible. Double defining Blackout immediately. Revan brought super low. Forced to use his uh, immortality field, but he's probably just going to have to... I would assume he's going to save his, uh, his amplification... Matrix. Well, no, they might be using that. They're, they're turning last it. fight. He should use this ultimate. Use this ultimate. It might be... Oh, no. He gets caught by the graph. Wait, what is going on? There are still four I... alive. Blackout came back, back with the sound barrier. And they're able to catch that. Capitalize on that. That wasn't bad. Um, Definitely after that previous performance on Li Zhang, I think that was a very, very solid um finish there for University of Hartford. They steamrolled kind of through that first and second point there, not really losing fights uh, for a prolonged amount of time, and only having one stumbling block besides their speed against the enemy team, the Hard Rockers, in that third point of King's Row. That wasn't bad. I think that that was a very solid 245 finish, uh, and it's going to come up to their defense here. That that was uh, an engaging finish there. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with their performance during that... Uh... The, this map as a whole, honestly, they they started to play a lot better. Absolutely, and it's definitely going to be necessary for them to pull back from that 0-1 match le uh, deficit so far today. Um, sorry, game deficit within the match today. Uh, an important distinction to make. Uh, and it's going to be another Widow out of spawn here for the attacking team, this time the Hard Rockers. Let's see if they're able to get as much effect as they did, uh, as Orimoru did, getting that singular pick. Out of window. Hopefully, University of Hartford is able to know what they did right and what the enemy team did wrong, not to repeat the same mistakes of the past. Absolutely. Now, we do see also uh, Mr. Oog. That's what I'm going to call him, by the way. Mr. Oog uh, selects this Reaper character. So, interesting to see how this works out. 
Yeah, I think the Reaper is definitely going to be necessary for point presence, especially alongside the Zarya. Just the bubbles cause they, uh, to be able to take over the front line. Very, very helpful. And University Hartford playing it safe. Not really peeking besides a deflecting Gendry and a uh, Zarya, which managed to dodge the shot. However, the Widow is still online from Cyberry. Interesting decision. I don't hate it, but um, it's very risky. And you see, just like that, Orimuru playing out in the open in the Widow's sight lines. If this Widow was any better, Orimuru probably would have been taken out. Revan, Absolutely though, no. out here wow. getting the first kill with the help of the Lucio and the Sojourn. Um, onto the Reaper. They're at a two-man advantage. The Widow gets taken out as i <laughs> about to talk about them. Lucio, all that remains for the Hard Rockers. Yeah, and a clean finish on that Widow from the Genji. I think I saw them for a second at full health and then immediately down to zero. That's going to be Cyberry swapping off of the Widow back onto a Sojourn, a more traditional pick that you would see in this type of comp. Um, and it seems like the Reaper got a little overzealous there. Uh, poked his head out a little bit too long a line for Revan to take him out with a clean three burst to the head. Uh, very, very solid uh, just weight game, especially between these two comps. University Hartford seems to be playing out better as Orimaru finds the headshot onto Dr. Gam. However, dangerously low, the University of Hartford investing an ultimate in here. Archimedes managing to trade, however, Trueblade does find Mr. Oog uh, as he goes down, pushing them a little bit further back with Cyberry, finding a headshot, keeping them in this game right here. Uh, this first point is up for grabs, most definitely. Uh, especially as University of Hartford just decides to back up a little bit. Maybe the healing is there to be able to keep them alive. The beat coming out to defend against the Graviton Surge. The Graviton kind of easily defeated by that beat as the Revan's going to try and get out here, or at least put him in a safer position, but they're going to have to touch here as the C9 comes out. Four alive from the University of Hartford, but none of them able to touch. Actually, five as they bladed into the back line, uh, not able to find enough to keep them on that first point. But I, I really... All close spawn. I really wanted to see Revan using his window during that fight. I think just the the massive bonus you get with that ultimate of the double damage and double healing, that's just so much. And if he had used that, I truly believe that Hartford would have been able to um, force the Hard Rockers off of that objective. Absolutely. And looks like they're electing to use it here. Uh, as it does go down with the Reaper in the back line, they do have to be careful of that. But they do find one and then two. However, Revan is traded with the other support on Lucio. Hard Rockers at a slight disadvantage as they're gonna just back out. A smart decision by them as University of Hartford does win a round bookstore in between Archway. It's interesting gonna see where they're gonna hold here as uh, Revan's coming back from spawn. And we see Black Black Bla 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 Blackout. Sorry, thinking about going to get him. Decides not to. Thanks, just keeping the four v five just to stall their payload push as much as they can. Uh, is going to yeah, be more optimal with the Baptiste, you know, Baptiste already here, uh, not too big of a deal, but Trueblade gets be. taken out, unfortunately. Perhaps it would yeah. have been preventable if they backed up further. Yeah, electing to go for the 4v5 stall there on the cart didn't really work when they kind of seeded so much ground to the cart and then took so much damage. Either speed out the entire team, go get your Baptiste and speed him back to be faster, but there needed to be a larger amount of coordination between the entire team about what they wanted to do in response to that deficit there. Uh, the, those dangerous uh, 13 situations, you know, dangerous situations, uh, 13 is a term from volleyball, uh, but those dangerous situations, you really have to be able to deal with them in a level-headed composure uh, as to not get ran over here, as uh, once again, they're going in without checking a couple things, they're also going to see 9 Well, I'm not sure how much of a C9 that is, or just not truly able to uh, contest this payload. That's fair. Gonna get this Lucio. Oh, Macumbe's barely sneaks him out with one last shuriken. Uh, can't spell shuriken without sure, and Macumbe's very sure that he was gonna get that shot there. Uh, very, very solid play from him. University of Hartford stalling. Third point. Beginning of third point here. It's a little bit of a dangerous position to hold, uh, whether or not you elect to go back to the corner. Uh, exceeding the space as we see University of Hartford here doing or trying to hold a little bit closer on point. They do have the ultimates online though, a, a good advantage for them as long as they use early in the fight. Once again, they're playing a little slow and hesitant. Trueblade really struggling to build up his ultimate charge, but he does find a massive grab. His team not quite able to follow up and find any finishes. Let's see what Orimaru's up to. He has his ultimate online, finds a powerful headshot onto that Zarya. 
maybe enough to win as long as this Reaper doesn't take him out. Finds another Ooh. one onto the Reaper. This is great soldier in play. <laughs> That's wow. a third from Orimori. Fantastic work by the wow. Sojourn of Hartford. Wow, you might as well call that uh, the <laughs> might as well call it the Richard Nixon, uh, as that was a tricky dicky little flick right there <laughs> from Ori Moru onto the uh, Reaper, as well as onto the Sojourn near the end. Uh, a very impressive play. I hope every single person saw the Reaper TP up top, but I don't think it's going to be important. It's Archimedes and Cyberry finding two on cart. Wow, and they're just pushing them all the way back into spawn. That was a very, very quick turnaround. Didn't even have me time to think. Uh, but that's going to be a grab in spawn, preventing the University of Hartford of getting out quickly. And I don't even think that the touch is going to be able to come out here. Oh, however, Genji touching for a second before it's being taken down. So that's going to be the Hard Rockers capping off here on King's Row, sending it in out of overtime. A little bit less time than University of Hartford, but three points is three points. Yeah, absolutely. And, well, obviously they would have loved to have held out longer. It's not the end of the world. They still do have the larger time bank. Um, and I think they're still in pretty solid position. Uh, I think one of the most significant uh, just macro issues, maybe you'd call it micro, I guess, um, from Hartford is that they are holding on to their amplification window of the Baptiste for a long time. I think he only used one in that whole round. He might have used it uh, during the like last second attempt too, but um, like the window comes online so quickly and so often that like there's no reason to just hold on to it. It's a it's both a high value ultimate as well as like a it's it's a high act high I'd say a high impact but like low value almost. It's it's weird to say because it's it's it has high potential. Yeah, like it's incredibly easy to avoid but it's also just like it being there forces the hard rockers to play more pa uh, patiently and passive and scared so simply just using it creates space on its own absolutely and like you said it just comes up so often it really should be used a little bit more than we've seen so far out of Revan 1982 uh, but this is going to be a very similar style of play or even finding a headshot almost immediately on the side barrier, however uh, Ori Mario is doing fantastic on this sojourn. I will say, like, I think in a, uh, during a different year, I think he'd be uh, definitely getting more playtime, but of course, the sojourn that uh, typically plays is Nift, who is one of the best sojourns uh, in yeah, the world. Yeah, I, like, I don't like, know if you need to really say much more besides the name. Nif underscore FPS underscore OW, uh, a fantastic option. However, Ori Mario doing very, very good in his stead. Uh, as he's going to be trying to control these long sight lines, uh, similar to the to how Nif no normally does. Sorry for tripping over my words exactly. there, but oh, and he takes up two with that fantastic work. Now become based, uh, has his ultimate charged for this next fight. Uh, looking forward to see how it, you know, how it pans out. Yeah, and Lord, let them go fast with this blade and strike true as possible, as it's going to be very necessary as we enter the last 40 seconds of this King Row, uh, King's Row overtime push. Oh wow, uh, Hard Rocker's coming in incredibly strong. I thought that was a deflected grab, but it wasn't. It was sent out a little bit ahead of them. Orimoro, however, able to convert out of that grab into a headshot. The blade coming in, the beat to save Hard Rockers, but I don't think it's going to be enough. These slashes coming in incredibly strong, but not finding a lot of damage. Doubled, taking down the Lucio, still low himself. The Sari incredibly low, getting taken down by a dash by become base out of blade. And this is going to be a clear advantage to University of Hartford, who especially took the tight fight slow, which means we're down to the last 10 seconds, and most likely a non-ability to retouch as the University of Hartford finishes off that fight with three seconds on the board. That was one of the and most- that's gonna be overtime. That was one of the most expensive fights I've seen in Overwatch 2 to date. I believe all 10 ultimates, perhaps, came out during that fight. That was so wild. Yeah, that was literally everything from the reserves and beyond. Uh, both from the University of Hartford and Hard Rockers. Very well fought, however, no purchase, not even a single percentage gained past 33 the necessary amount to put this in a winnable location for the hard rockers however the south dakota team is definitely going to have to try and pull off for the draw if they want to have any shot of continuing the steamroll momentum that they had coming off that lee shang map
but this is going to be University of Hartford's attack. And I think I think it's pretty safe to say that Hartford Hartford has pretty successfully you know changed the momentum of this game. Oh, absolutely. If they want to allow it to slip through their fingers, South Dakota is just going to have to, well, not necessarily throw this. This could still be very very solid fights, but this is kind of a latch just effort for them to to keep any inkling of that forward momentum and that push that came off of that previous map, but it's it's definitely slipping away. Yeah. Ori Morio messing around with a devilish spray, looking for a devious lick onto a headshot. Is he able to cap it? Especially with everybody hiding and seeming to be privy to his previous accolades. However, staying on the Widow this time. Seems really like the team has granted him one shot. And there it is. Just looking Another. to see what he can do with it. He's... I don't know, maybe... Maybe he's just feeling himself. He did play really well um, on the Sojourn. And, you know, he did find his one pick at the spawn room. But he's not, you know, not finding what he's hoping, I'm sure. Yeah, and in the midst of battle, it's much different than a setup play. However, Trueblade doing the Lord's work, finding two. Not only the Torbjorn, but also the, the incredibly affluent heals. Oh, and the, the other healer going down as well to Trueblade 16. And that's going to be point taken without, I think, a single shot landed by the Widow. Not always necessary, however. The <laughs> no. way in which we talk about bat fields, very similar to how Widow plays. Just being on the map could just change the entire mentality of an opposing team. Absolutely. And they, they simply, similarly, like, like we mentioned earlier, like it just, it forces them to play more carefully. And just the fear of getting hit by a headshot can sometimes be enough to force a win. 